Hello everybody, it's been two years since I last recorded a video that showed how I was retouching photos from a bar and things have changed a little. I've uh, improved my knowledge of some things, I've improved some of my techniques and even though the core is still the same, I figured I'd just uh, sit down and do an update and uh, just to show what you know has been happening since then. I am still working for Mundolingo, which is an international language exchange organization. They have events in Montreal, but other, also in other cities around the globe. I think there's more than 20 now. And they work together with bars where they you know, make events once, twice, sometimes three times per week, depending on the city. And people gather there and just talk to each other and exchange and, you know, get to know each other. It's a very vibrant young thing and it is always in bars and it's always in the evening. So we're looking at a very challenging environment here because bars are usually not very well lit. And you have to make do with what you have. Now what I have is a Canon EOS 6D and I'm shooting with a 50mm f1.4 USM lens. I'm usually shooting at 2 f2 or f2.2 and I barely get a uh, shorter exposure than a hundredth and I you know normally my ISO is between 5000 and 8000 so what you can imagine is that there's going to be a lot of grain in these images and I have my subtle techniques of improving that grain or at least the noise the grain will stay but it's not going to look like an oil painting so that's one thing we're going to look at today but also just some general things like how do I approach photos like these to make them look really good um, quick disclaimer, this is from a few days ago. I took photos uh, that night at the bar and this is the first time I'm looking at them. So I didn't do anything to them. I'm just going to jump right in. We have 31 photos here. I'm not going to do all 31, but I'm just going to go through to show you guys some examples of what I think needs to be done to each photo to make it look really good. Why don't we just start at photo number one, double click. Um, so we're using Darktable, by the way, this is version 2.4.4, which is the newest version at the moment. And I have a number of presets of things that I usually do to each photo. For instance, uh, this is a preset that I do most of the time, which is basically just a very slight subtle denoise, which I'm gonna show you in a moment how that works. And it uh, does no equalization. Um, I'm gonna show you the difference in a moment, uh, but it also does, a um, it does a hot pixel filter so it fi filters out or removes all the hot pixels pixels that are in the camera um, whatever DSLR you have if you've had it for a while it it will de develop hot pixels it's just something that happens so you just um, set the hot pixel filter to on and they get removed so um, let's first actually just do the preset that says uh, with the EQ and if I do this you see that just this got a little bit deeper everything um, you know became a little bit uh, it popped a little bit because what uh, what I did was I used a setting in the equalizer that added a little bit of local contrast I'm just gonna change the mix here the mix slider to bring this back down you see this is what it is uh, if it's at zero, right, but uh, if we go up to one or we go even further, you can see the effect taking hold. Um, for for photos like this, actually, that are taken in, you know, low light environments and where the light is fairly even, it's actually not too bad to use a little bit of that because it adds, as I said, a little bit of extra contrast and depth to the picture. So I'm going to keep this. The other thing I did here was, um, as I said, we started out at the base curve, right? Like this is what the program does for you by default. It just applies a base curve that is basically just a standard EOS base curve. You can change them and use the other ones, um, but you don't really have to. And then I did the hot pixels filter to remove the hot pixels. Right now here you can't really see them, but trust me, they're gone. Then came the equalizer. Then came the denoise, which we're going to look into a little bit uh, closer now. And then came the input color profile, which at some point in time I, I put into my standard... Uh, thing but I don't even remember why exactly I think there was something off with the colors or there was some fringing or something going on that uh, changed if I changed the color profile and uh, so I kept it in um, let me just see where I have this probably here input color profile is down here I sent it to I set it to standard color matrix oh yeah the gamut clipping um, there was something with that where I think the colors tipped into purple or something or like shades of blue where it became like a very 
uh, low dithered um, effect on some pictures that you can get rid of if you change the gamma clipping to linear from I think something else that it was before let me see yeah by default it's off and you set it to linear and you get uh, you just get better I mean the general short version is just uh, I, I always keep it on because it gets me a better picture it gets me smoother dithering in some cases that, and, um, than it otherwise would have been now we want to talk just real quick about uh, denoise I only use the non local non local means filter at this point in my life I used to use other ones as well but you know after a while I figured you know what they they just they just make it too mushy they just uh, they filter out too much detail and I didn't like them any that much anymore um, I still have one here where it's times two that's where I add a separate denoise settings from the equalizer but in this case I'm just using the non-local means and we're going to really quickly look at what this does um, the non-local means basically removes that uh, I would say oil painting effect that you would otherwise have if I go back here you could see that now that there's a very um, colorful noise going on right but if I use the denoise thing for, for non-local means and I'm going to find it I think it's here there um, I'm going to go to the setting you're going to see that I put the strength up to 100 and I only changed um, the luma I think I did hang on yeah so this one stays the same patch size stays the same and I only changed the luma luma basically means uh, um, I, I brought that down a little and uh, you're you're gonna have no more of this you know oil painting color blotchy effect and you only have the um, like a nice pleasing grain left you know the grain is something that you're gonna be stuck with but you know it's it's much nicer this way I think I wonder what happens if I change how the smooth colors um, I don't quite even remember oh yeah right no the chroma needs to go all the way to the top because now you see I have that color effect back we don't want that so we keep it at the top so there we go that is um, you know what I'm doing with uh, denoise and uh, you know hot pixels etc settings let me just go back to the beginning and there we are so um, this is sharp enough I like how sharp this photo came out although you know this girl isn't perfectly perfectly in focus but it's just fine I'm, I'm quite happy with it what you can do is you can go to the fine part of the equalizer like here you have the very coarse parts of the evil equalizer and if I were to raise it there you're gonna see that the local contrast so the contrast between bright parts and dark parts in the picture are um, is gonna be enhanced but it's gonna be very diffuse right there we go uh, but if I do it in the fine areas back here then it's going to be very uh, local, very um, sharp the way it it attacks this, right? Um, it brings out the grain um, a lot actually, but it also you know enhances the uh, the contrast here, for instance, around these edges of his cap, um, which you know gives you a little bit more sharpness. Um, I don't really want that effect. I think it's a little bit too too strong. But just to show it to you, I might do a little bit to get a little bit more around her glasses there that's just about fine you know so there we are with this photo the other thing that I've started looking into very carefully is um, white balance obviously when you shoot in a place like this um, sometimes I bought this little light actually that I you know what, let me show you this guys I think you're gonna like that uh, this light is something you could just mount on your camera um, and it's it's really nice it just costs uh, 23 Canadian dollars like in, in Germany it's I think it's like 16 euros or something like that and it's really convenient because you just switch it on and it lights your scene and then uh, if, if I have that on I usually set my white balance in a in a bar to 3800 Kelvin 3800 Kelvin um, this is just manually the the color um, the warmth yeah, the temperature that I s uh, select and we're gonna see some pictures here in this album that I made with this little light on and um, we're gonna you know take another look at um, photos of course that were taken without this but um, while you 
you, like if you want to buy this, it's it's really it's such a small investment that it's totally worth it. And I'm pretty sure, like I saw them at Amazon.com.au and also at .com and .fr. So they're they're available worldwide for little money. It's really worth buying one of these. They last forever. The batteries last forever. It's just a bunch of LEDs. Um, but do um, you know take like a, a piece of white cloth or you know a, a, a tissue, a paper tissue, and and just uh, put tape around it and tape it over this because otherwise you're going to blind people. Um, so much for these guys. So let's go back here and we are looking at uh, still the same photo. So we were talking about white balance. Um, what I started doing is I just use spot white balance and I find a spot that I know is supposed to be white so for, or a shade of gray, right? Anything on the spectrum from pure black to pure, pure white. So for instance, this guy is wearing a gray white shirt. So if I say this is supposed to be white, then the software Darktable is going to do the rest for you. It's just going to adjust the white balance of the picture to match uh, this as the white tone, you know, the white setting and um, the rest of the colors are going to follow suit. Um, so now we have a much more natural tone for um, you know these people in the picture. But I also think it lost a little bit of life. So you know we're, we're down to 2,500. I'm you know I want to keep this at around 3,000. It it turns a little warmer as you can see. Um, and uh, I think we, we have a little bit more light here. Another really module that has been added to Darktable, I think like sometime in 2017, is the color lookup table, where you can mostly use these two patches to um, directly manipulate the darker or the brighter skin tones. So watch if I brighten this, you, you can see how on the girl's face, the brighter part of her face lights up a little, right? And if I were to darken this, I'm just gonna do this for exaggeration, this turns darker, right? Um, I, you know what, for this picture, it's actually not even that necessary to do much with the color lookup table. Um, for, perhaps just a little, you know what, this isn't actually so bad. Like, let me just darken this patch a little bit more, not uh, so we don't go too crazy with this, but something like this. Um, yeah, I think that works. Now the girl has a little bit more contrast on her face. Her face, um, stands out a little bit more. And the last thing I do, this is a matter of taste. Um, I like it. Now I go back, uh, crop and rotate, and I crop to 16 by 9, which is HDTV. It's like a format that you know you see in um, modern television shows or movies and stuff like that. It's kind of cool. So I like that. Um, another thing that I've started looking for that I was less, um, you know, that I was more lenient about before is I turn on this tool which tells us the under and overexposed parts of the picture. Everything that's red is overexposed, so the whites are blown out, and everything that's blue is underexposed, it's too dark. You want to make sure ideally if you want to really get the very best quality out of your photo that nothing is underexposed and nothing is overexposed so you can either use the exposure tool and just bring down the exposure until you know all the red disappears um, or you could and then you know with the black you just brighten the black until this is pretty much gone um, I'm not taking it that I'm not you know being that anal about it really but like if you can minimize this at least a little bit, then you should be fine, you know. But we just we also want to make sure, like, do we lose contact? Uh, uh, do we lose contrast or you know, uh, like luminosity on on the people's faces, which are still the most important parts of the picture. And in this case, I think by by doing what I just did, I do more damage to the picture than it's worth, you know. So actually, in this case, I'm going to keep it. So I'm going to compress and this picture is done. Usually, of course, uh, everything I just did, I would do in uh, like a few seconds, but just to explain to you guys and to show what uh, what's going on, um, that's what we're doing. Again, we put some equalizer on this, uh, a little bit of depth, and we remove the grain and the, you know, um, uh, the, the noise and from the picture. You can see there's only nice grain left. And we have this uh, young guy talking to this girl. We're going to go to crop and rotate. Bring this down a little. There we go. Ta-da. Yep. And uh, let's see if we go to white balance, uh, temperature. Just going to bring it down a little, you know. Um, and there we are, perhaps with the color lookup table. Now I can brighten his face just a little. Yeah. And there we go. I think that's just uh, just about fine. 
Okay, now I'm going to go through the next few pictures a little bit faster because, you know, I've explained a whole lot of stuff that I'm doing on the first picture so you guys get the idea. And we're just going to look at some retouches and if I think of something to say along the way, I'm going to shout. So, bringing down the colors a little bit. You can see how, like, right, like this, we're, we're losing some of the, uh, you know, over uh, overly strong tint you know like this is just way too yellow I think and now this is much more natural and uh, we get these people uh, more clearly it's still important in my case like I, I shoot uh, for like this this um, organization Mundo Lingo they want to see mostly pictures about you know people like, like candid shots basically that show people interacting having fun talking to each other without um, being uh, seen, you know, without without seeing that you, they're being photographed, or you know, while well, not caring that they're being photographed, either of the two, um, and that's what I'm achieving, or at least I'm <laughs> hoping that I achieve here. Um, one thing that I would do with this picture is I would just crop it a little bit because you know I always look around the edges. This is something that I should let go of because it's more distraction than it helps. Um, and in this case, yeah, like there's this like this little bit of space here behind this guy's head that we don't really need, you know. So I crop it while keeping the aspect ratio and I crop it right till here because then we're also losing this little bright spot here that could be a potential distraction for a viewer we can perhaps oh let's not go down let's not cut the other guy's head off and there we go right now we have a nicer crop and we have a nice picture let's see if the um, color lookup table does something if I bring this up yeah a little bit there we go just a little um, again, you know, of course, now you can see there's a ton of stuff that's overexposed. Um, make this decision for yourself, right? Like, make this decision. Do you want to live with overexposed parts or not? Um, these pictures are going to be distributed on the Internet, so it's it's perfectly fine. You know, I, it's not like we're going to print them and put them in an art gallery. Um, okay. So this one, perhaps a little bit more. Hang on a second there. Where is it? Equalizer, perhaps a little bit more sharpness. Just a tad. It's not going to be visible on this uh, and at this size, but if I zoom in, we're going to see he became a little sharper. Sometimes um, what I do is I go uh, not low pass. Low pass is an interesting thing, by the way. I'm gonna, I can show you that as well. But I go with the tone curve and I bring up the darker parts a little. Whoops, not so much. It's perhaps a little too much. And then I say automatic instead of automatic. I go manual, and you see that the, the color isn't um, distorted as much. It's not being um, made too uh, intense. So, and then, but the the reason I'm doing this is to bring out his eyes a little bit. So I'm going to use a drawn mask here uh, with the mouse wheel. You just make this a little bit smaller. If you hold Shift and scroll the mouse wheel, you can define how much blur there's going to be around this mask. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to just do this around. <laughs> yeah, right. That clearly works very well. Um, let me just zoom in here. So obviously that's not so ideal. Whoops. Let's bring this in and bring this in. You see that the blur is like from here to here, right? Uh, so that blur, of course, needs to be much more. And I'm still doing this too aggressively. Yeah, that's not enough. Perhaps something like that. What happens if I go automatic? Uh, perhaps a little bit too strong, so let's do it manual. Yep. Yeah. Um, before, after. You know, his eyes are just now a little bit brighter, a little bit more visible, which is uh, helpful. Um, what I what you can also do in the same curve is just raise the whites of his eyes a little. But again, you know, even now you're you're perhaps going, or I'm going a little bit too strong there. Let me see if I can. I'll bring it. How do I bring back the shape? Okay, let's see. Let's just make this smaller. Let's just uh, constrict it more on the actual eyes, uh, and see what this does. Right. Yeah, how about that? That's going to look nice. Okay, pretty aggressive curve. We can let go of this point now. And uh, 
before and after. Yep, I like it. I like it. A little bit more expressive, uh, expressiveness here. White balance. Again, we. I think we can tone it down a little. Yeah, just like that. Perfect. Okay, let's keep going. Yeah, let's uh, let's uh, burn through a couple of these. You know, let's not waste too much time on them because now I'm going to do a mod lot of the same things I've already showed you. Uh, this one, yeah. Oops, crop and rotate. There we go. Yeah, we don't really need this lamp up there again. It's just uh, it distracts a little bit too much. And then we have this girl's white shirt down here, which uh, yeah, I guess we're gonna have to live with. Let me see if I bring a vignette in there. No, no, that doesn't really make too much of a good difference. Sometimes a vignette can be useful, perhaps a small one. It's not going to do anything about the shirt, but it's going to frame the picture a little bit. Whoops, no, the standard one. Yeah, a little bit less. Okay, so these are just presets I made for the vignette, you know. Um, I can upload some of these to, uh, I don't know, Dropbox or whatnot and share the links in the, in the video description. Comment on this video if you want any of these presets uh, for your own Darktable installation and I'll just make them available. That's not a problem. Okay, cool. So I think I'm fine with this. Yeah, let's go. Denoise a little, uh, bring down the white balance. I should perhaps just start shooting at a lower temperature period something like this um, in general you know like one thing you want to do when you when you photograph uh, in a bar or you, like when you got when I got lively pictures you know try not to have too many people with their backs turned I mean this one is sort of um, for my own taste it's a little bit uh, um, it's pushing the boundaries it's pushing it a little you know like let me just get rid of part of this guy's back because it's just too much back turned you know, this this girl is the subject of the picture. That's who we want to look at, or that's how we're supposed to look at. And um, so let's give her the spotlight. You know, let's not have this white big blotch of a guy who doesn't even look at us, who's turned away from us, just stealing the show. Okay, um, I did that, I did that. Um, let's see again, you know, if I put a vignette on this, this time it actually helps quite a lot because it drowns out the shirt a little. And you know, around here, it gives us some more framing. And uh, you know, since like you you don't you you quickly unsee the palette, you know, uh, the vignette. Like you you know that I put it there, but if you were looking at the photo just like that, it, like next to all the others, you wouldn't really notice very quickly that oh, there's a vignette on this photo. You know where it is there. Um, so that's sort of the outcome you want there. Uh, let me just quickly go back to this. I think I can brighten this guy's face a little more. Eh, you know what, no. Yeah, like that, perhaps. There, not more than that. I mean, now I, I, th I think I lost some detail on this shirt anyway. Oh, that's not too bad, actually. Yeah. Another really cool tool is the color balance tool, where you can select selectively change the features of the you know dark tones, the middle tones, and the bright tones, also known as uh, lift, gamma, and gain. So if I were to raise the the, the brightness of the mid mid tones, for instance, you can see that you know the gamma rises. Uh, I could but I could also bring down the gain. You know now the you can see that, uh, that there's detail on the shirt that suddenly comes back because I'm bringing it back. And you can also see it up here in the um, in the histogram that you know data is coming back from the the right part of the picture where it used to be blown out. Uh, that's too much. Again, I mean, in the end, it's all subjective. Let's see. We came from here, right? We went to here. Do I like it more? Yeah, you know what? I like it a little more. Perhaps now I can just bring back a little bit of warmth and then we're fine. Yeah. There we go. Okay, so we did this girl, we did this. Let's go here. Okay. Now, right before I took this photo, the management of the bar lowered the light, so I was forced to go to ISO 8000 meaning uh, there's even more grain in this picture, right? It's right there. Uh, again, you know, before I do the denoise, it's like this. You know, if we look at his face there, after the denoise, it's like this, so it's much nicer. 
um, did I put the equalizer? Yes, I did. Okay, and also, you know, since the light turned darker, um, less light, um, the colors tend to come out a little stronger. So again, we can lose a little bit of the of the warmth, make it look a little bit more um, realistic. And again, I would crop this picture because here, big white blotch, uh, it's distracting and it doesn't really add to the picture at all. So I'm going to take it in in this direction, like right to the edge of the guy's ears. And we have a tighter picture with a stronger focus and a stronger story to tell. There we go. Yeah, this doesn't need much attention at all. Just this and uh, oh, it's a little white balance. Let's see. I mean, he's clearly wearing a white shirt, so let's make it white. Uh, again, you know, now you can see, okay, now it's white, but it's lost a little bit of liveliness. So, oh my God, it went all the way down. Let's go to 3000 or 2007. Yeah, that's fine. That is perfectly fine. And the histogram shows us we're good, you know. Um, not too much underexposed, not too much overexposed. Perhaps we can lose a little bit of this. Whoops, no, that's the wrong direction. Yeah, until there's no more overexposure on this shirt. And then bring a little bit black there. Done. You know, even without, uh, perhaps without bringing this. Yeah, no, I'm already overexposing stuff. Something like that. Next one. Yeah. Way too yellow. By the way, you know, I'm just using the mouse wheel on this. You just hover the mouse here and you scroll the mouse wheel. Another thing you can do if you want to have fine cut, obviously you can just drag and clack, uh, click and drag it, but you could also right click and then you have this and you know, you can use this curve to very finely control um, how much you want to raise or lower the temperature here. You can do this with any slider in the in the app. A um, little bit too red for my taste, so I'm going to nudge this to the right, turn it a little bit more yellow, the tint, and make it a little warmer. Yeah, let's see. He His face is a little flat, so let's see if we can use the color lookup table real quick to change that. Yeah, you know what? That helps. Um, There we go. Okay, so just for the heck of it, I'm going to show you the low pass tool. So the low, low pass you can use basically to apply a sort of bloom to the picture. Bloom is, um, it, it brings out or it amplifies the, the, the lighter parts of the picture. Uh, it, it has a tendency to, to, to blow them out, so you might lose some detail depending on which picture you use Bloom on. But it also smooths everything and makes everything a little bit uh, more yeah, um, soft. It softens the picture, right? Mm. Let's take a look here. So this is before Bloom. And this is after bloom, and we can see we added, you know, the the dark parts turned a little darker again. And basically, the setting in low pass is you give it a nice radius of like 50%. Uh, well, look at them, you know, memorize them if you want. Uh, and you can look up. The way I first learned about this was by googling GIMP bloom effect. Um, which showed people uh, shows people a little bit how to do that. Yeah, I don't have it now. Sort of like a soft glow, yeah, that you add to to the pic. It's a soft glow that that really is the purpose of this. Um, if you look up bloom effect dark table or bloom effect gimp, you will uh, go a little bit more into the into the mechanics of the whole thing. But uh, suffice to say, you need to use the blend mode spotlight. Uh, a soft light and you then need to use these kinds of settings to get a nice bloom effect and if you want to you know attenuate the uh, how strong it, it works you just uh, change the the opacity of it a little and with the tone curve I'm going to bring his uh, raise the temp uh, the color brightness on the face a little I keep that manual yep 
Now, I was talking about this uh, this light, okay? This is the first picture that was taken with this light. We can see there's uh, ambient light coming from this side, so there's like a uh, yellow light coming on their faces. You see the light sources in the bar, they have this color. Whereas on their faces, we have something that is uh, red and even t uh, tips into blue, a little bit bluish, right, around here. Um, that is the light that came off the little lamp. Obviously, since these are white LEDs, they emit white light, cold light, blue, uh, and, and they add blue to the picture. So I think we can go up in the temperature a little to, you know, counteract this and look at what a nice, um, natural, smooth color um, cast this picture now has. I think it turns out really nice with, the, with that little lamp on the camera. Um, as I said, I, I put a, a tissue over the camera. I just taped it with scotch tape, um, and that means that people don't really, uh, they don't get, really get blinded all that much, which helps. Okay, so yeah, good picture. I'm, I don't think it needs anything more. Yep, this is another nice one. I like to take some ambient pictures here and there. Uh, perhaps you know, make this a little cooler. This is white. Oh God, no. Nah, it needs to get warmer. Yep. Where is my tone curve? Up here. Yep, nice. And we keep going. All right. So um, let's just go through these. And uh, I'm going to just keep doing this for a while because now I've, I've told you a lot of what I can, you know, I'm, I'm about to tell you. I'm going to pause my recording. I'm going to keep um, editing pictures. And when I have something to say, I'm going to be back. Uh, you're not going to notice the time difference. I will talk to you in just a second. So let's take a really quick look at this. Uh, so it's just another example of something I said earlier. Um, you see this part down here? Just a big white part that distracts from the picture. Get rid of it like this, crop it like this, 16 by 9, and you get a nicer picture. Here's one where I played with colors a little bit. I used the colorize tool um, to give it a, a slight blue cast. So the colorize tool is here on the <laughs> effects group, magic group, I was going to say. Uh, and then, you know, you just pick your hue and uh, you can just give the, the whole picture a nice color cast. Uh, you know, in this case, I made it uh, a little bit more blue. And uh, low opacity, you know, don't don't drench it in blue, but uh, put a little bit. And then you, you get a sort of denim effect, you know, which sometimes I like. I just like to tinker around. Uh, it's a matter of taste, quite honestly. Um, so that's one thing you could do. And then another thing, again, this is another example where, you know, we have this half chopped off face here. It's just sticking into the picture and not really contributing. And uh, so we might as well crop it out like this. There we go. All right, you know what, I'm gonna push this down because we don't need the stuff over our head either. Let's see a little bit more of the person. All right. Here's an example where even after a few steps of, you know, um, applying modules, I find that the girl is uh, a little bit flat and she just, you know, she disappears in, the, disappears in the whole picture a little bit too much. So what I did is I did a low, uh, tone curve and I just put a, a shape, you know, like this is the shape I was using. Um, this is how far it blurs. Um, and I then, uh, you know, increased the blur a little, like if I did it like this, Oh yeah, no, it wouldn't even make that much of a difference. But, uh, you know, I increased the blur a little so that around the edges it smoothly transitions from where the effect is applied to where it isn't. And um, you can see that, you know, this is the tone curve that I'm using. Um, I'm just going to turn it off. You see the difference, right? Uh, so her face has more, um, a, a larger, it's more dynamic, right? Like this, uh, the brighter parts are brighter, the darker parts are a little darker, and she stands out a little more without really sacrificing the color integrity there. Um, I might just, yeah, let me push it a little bit more towards yellow. Uh, not too much, something like that. There we go. Okay, so that's that. Let's see. And we have arrived at the last picture. 
Thank you very much for watching and I hope this gave you a little bit of an insight into you know what else you can do perhaps just in addition to the 2016 video or just as an update what you can do to get a nice quality out of pictures you took in a bar as a general rule of thumb um, just something that I had to learn the hard way over four years of shooting in bars um, when you photograph people in a bar, first of all, like if you don't have a lens that, that opens up to at least 2.8, like you should have have like the, the 1.8 or 1.4 lens. That Those are not expensive and they're really fantastic for this because you can open them up really far. You know, like I, even uh, later in the later on in the evening, I was shooting at f2.0 and ISO 8000. Um, if you don't have one of those, then you, you will need to use one of those cute little Godox lights, which I th find so handy. Um, that's the first thing and also if you are shooting in a bar don't look for people look for light first um what that means is walk around the bar and um you know if you see somebody with light shining on their face like this guy right you can see he, the light is here and it's shining right on his face and it's illuminating him now you're getting a good picture because this person is in the spotlight he's standing out from the crowd first of all because other people are not as well lit this girl isn't very well lit you know this guy isn't as strongly lit as this guy so he stands out uh, so you look for light and then when you find light on people's faces photograph them because if you photograph somebody who's not standing in the light you're bringing you're trying to bring them out um, especially when you're not using that lamp. Uh, they're they're going to be flat, they're going to be dull and lifeless, and you're going to have problems with exposure, you're going to have problems with camera shake and, uh, as, exp uh, as an extension of that blur. Uh, any uh, All of these effects you don't want. So light is your friend, use the light, find the light, see the light, use it to your advantage. Um, that's the biggest thing that I've learned while shooting in bars. If somebody's doing, if somebody could do the most awesome thing, if they're not standing in the light, you're probably not going to get a very nice shot of it. Um, if you find somebody who's standing in the light, just um, you know, keep your camera on them for a while. Most of the time, people won't mind. Um, sometimes they won't, they won't notice. Sometimes they, they will notice, and then uh, you know, they won't mind, which is pretty much 90% of what happens to me. Sometimes they will turn away visibly or will hold up their hand. Then they, then you will know they don't want to be photographed, and you just make a mental note and don't come back to them again. Um, okay, I keep rambling. You get the general idea. You get where we're going with this. Uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching. I'm really curious to know if you are using Darktable. I would like to hear about what modules are you using and how are, are they benefiting your uh, photography, right? Also, what are you trying to do? What are you trying to achieve with your photography? And what kinds of tricks have you learned? Um, respond to me in the comments below and we can, you know, have a nice conversation. I'm all for it. All right. That's it, and thank you very much for watching. We'll talk soon. Bye.